Now, as we prepare for worship service, wasn't that a nice way to come into the sanctuary this morning to sit? It's nice and cool in here, but also to hear, be serenaded uh, with, with some beautiful music. Thank you so much for playing. Thank you for being here this morning. Hope your 4th of July went well. Uh, it went well here for the most part. We did have a more of exciting time in the evening, but uh, we all made it through just fine. And uh, for those that did come, uh, we had a, you know we had a good group that came, and we had a lot of fireworks, we had a lot of power and ammunition, and uh, everybody left with ten fingers, ten toes, and all their body parts. So that's good. Uh, but uh, hopefully this week has gone well. I know that Harvest has been going full steam ahead, and hopefully you're all doing just fine and uh, getting what you need to get done. And I know there's a ton more. So welcome to churches. You're going to come in t today. We're going to relax. We're going to enjoy some time singing songs together, uh, worshiping our, 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 our Heavenly Father together. Today we're going to talk about uh, Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 through 14 is the text. We're going to focus on just chapter 3. And uh, look at, at, at how God unites and blesses us uh, as we are uh, in, this, in this world right now. But so th welcome to, uh, to Peace Lutheran Church. If those that are visiting, my name is Pastor Luke Emerson. Uh, I, and I, I think I know almost everybody in here. But uh, if you don't know me, stop afterwards and say hello. But uh, welcome. As you see, the, this, this, this coming week, uh, it's a pretty light week. Uh, the only thing we have is, is Saturday we have men's uh, breakfast at 8 o'clock. So come or read uh, first, uh, first Timothy chapter 5. And we're going to go over First Timothy chapter 5 together. And then, of course, you see service next week. Uh, and the rest of the, uh, the uh, announcements. Uh, Sidewalk Prophets is coming. Again, if you want to uh, attend that concert, please let me know. Uh, and so we can or have some tickets and, and uh, plan on going up ac accordingly. Uh, as you saw, uh, the yesterday morning, uh, early, down here at the, at the, at the pool, there, there seemed to be something going on because yeah, it was packed. But we have uh, at least one. Do we have, is Breck here today? I don't see her, but we have one of the, uh, well, how, how many of the swimmers are, are, are here? One, two, that's it, two of them? Okay. Well, it was amazing, and we have some amazing swimmers, and I know that next week is the champ championship in, in McCook, right? And so uh, cheer them along as they, as they go, but uh, the Sainty Sharks, I was like, now would that be a land shark? Would that be... But the way they swim, they swim pretty fast. So, uh, also in the back after service, there are two cards in in the back: one for Norris and one for Al Cruz, uh, as as they are both uh, healing. Uh, and if you'd like to drop them a little note, we're going to send it off to them and and, uh, and and wish them well. But Norris is back up at the at the assisted living, so he's out of the hospital and up there. And uh, so uh, that is a positive. And Al has been transferred to Lincoln, Nebraska, and so keep him in prayer but there are many others there that we're going to continue to pray for and lift up and and uh, but i'm just glad you're here today and uh, today as we uh, prepare to worship let's let's set our heart right by just talking to our heavenly father heavenly father i come before you this morning again and i thank you and i praise you for this glorious day that you've given us i thank you for this time that we can be in your house to worship you today lord you know the all the different things that has gone on this week, uh, the different uh, procedures that were done, and then the and the healing that's been done, and but also, Lord, uh, for the protection that you've given to so many of us, Lord, and and uh, I'm just I'm thanking you for this time that we can be in your house to worship you today, Lord. I, I do lift up uh, this service to you and ask for you to bless it. Uh, I know it says in Scripture in, in Matthew where two or three are gathered in your name, you are in the midst, and so that means that you are here right now. And so, Lord, I thank you for being here. Please talk to our hearts. Talk to our minds. Take all the anxieties that we have right now. It could be uh, uh, our, our job. It could be our finances. It could be many things. It could be relationships. It could be, you know, just that, you're not, that, that we're not feeling well. But, Lord, I know that you brought us here for a reason this morning and that you have uh, brought us here to worship you and to feel your presence, to know that you love us and to fill us with your grace, your mercy, and your love. So, Lord, as we're here, I'm just asking that you would continue to open our eyes, open our hearts, open our minds to you, and let us be filled with your spirit. I love you, Lord. I thank you, and I praise you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 
Well, before we sing our first song, why don't we stand up and let's greet each other in the name of Jesus Christ. Well, remain standing and let's open our hymnal to hymn number 373, All Things Bright and Beautiful, 373. good. Let's turn to the Lord and confess our sin. Dear Heavenly Father, we bow before you to seek your forgiveness for our sins. We have sinned by disobedience and omission, with pride and selfishness, 
and with disrespect and unrighteous living. For these we are truly sorry and seek your mercy and grace. Cleanse us according to your word in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. It says in scripture, if we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. With that being said, and I know that it is not a communion Sunday, but I thought that this whole month we're going we're gonna to use the Nicene Creed every week. And so let, join me in what we believe with the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one of substance with the Father, by whom all things were made who for us and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and on the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and is seated on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom shall happen. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, whom with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe one holy Christian and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. The call to worship this morning is from the 143rd Psalm, where we read, For your namesake, O Lord, preserve my life. In your righteousness, bring my soul out of trouble. Hear my prayers, O Lord. Give ear to my pleas for mercy. In your faithfulness, answer me in your righteousness. Enter, into, enter not into judgment with your servant, for no one living is righteous before you. Let me hear in the morning of your steadfast love, for in you I trust. Let us pray. O Lord, you granted your prophets strength to resist the temptation of the devil and courage to proclaim repentance. Give us pure hearts and, remind, and, and minds to follow your Son faithfully, even into suffering and death. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Father God in heaven, I come before you this morning again, and I again thank you for this absolutely glorious and beautiful morning that you've given to us. Thank you for this great week of, of, uh, of, of good weather, for the heat and for the rain, but also for the wind. And I, I thank you, Lord, for how you are working in so many people's lives and, and how I, I'm able to watch and see you at work. Lord, I know that there are, there are people that are hurting right now, and I know that there are people that are struggling in different ways. If it could, if it's, might be, a, like I said before, if it was a job or finances or whatever else is going on in their, in their hearts, Lord, I'm just asking that you would allow them to take those things and put them to the side to worship you today. I know there's other people that are healing, and I thank you for the healing you've done in so many different lives, but as Norris continues to heal, be with him, Lord. Thank you for how you have touched Roger's body and continue to touch his, his, his left arm and let it come back to, to full service, Lord. For how Holly is healing and coming along so well, but continue to give her peace and, and patience, Lord. For surely, Lord, the, the good visit I had with her this, this week, I thank you that, that uh, some of the, th the issues with her health are, are, are going away and that she's becoming stronger and stronger. Continue to be with Dolores, Lord, uh, and that entire, in, the, in the entire family. Please be with them and watch over them. For Don Hartman and, and Al, Lord, you know what they have gone through, and please continue to heal their bodies, and, and as, as they're in different places, Lord, would you please touch them and, and let them continue to know that you, are, that you have them in the palm of your hands. Lord, continue to give us safe harvest and watch over those that are, that are working out in the fields and those that are driving semis and all the stuff that goes on to right now, Lord. I, I know that you have them, 
and that you're watching over them. Protect them, Lord. Uh, provide where they need it. Lord, thank you for the EMS and fire department and our law enforcement, Lord, as they continue to serve this, our communities. And Lord, continue to uh, provide again for them where they need it. And, and uh, as they continue to do their job, Lord, would you watch over them and, and, uh, and, and, just, and just bring them right where they need to be at the certain right time uh, and let them know that you are in control. Lord, I do lift up our country, and as we just got done celebrating the in Independence Day, Lord, I, I'm just asking for you to continue to be with our country. Allow us to, to, to do the things and, and to, and to uh, uh, put our eyes back on you and only to look to you, not to anything else. But also, Lord, for our leaders, not just in our country, but in our state and in our, in our local government and even in this church, Lord, uh, be with the leaders and, and, and give them the right things to do and how to do them. Lord, you know, as we're in your house today and we're going to take a look at some scripture today, I know that, uh, Lord, you have something for us and that you want to deliver it to us and put it right, right between our eyes. Let us hear your voice loud. And then let us take it and apply it to our lives, Lord, so that we know exactly what you want for us. Lord, be with any of those people right now that are, that are either hearing my voice or that are here or present or watching live on, on, uh, on, on the computer, Lord. Would you, if there's someone that's going through some troubled times, Lord, would you just touch them? Would you let them feel you? Let them hear, let them hear your voice and let them focus on you. I love you, Lord. I thank you for what you do. You are an awesome God, and I will always serve you. In your precious name I pray. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The Old Testament lesson is written in 2 Samuel chapter 6, verses 12b through 19. So David went and brought up the ark of God from the house of Obedium to the city of God with rejoicing. And when those who bore the ark of the Lord had gone six steps, he sacrificed an ox and fattened an animal. And David danced before the Lord with all his might. And David was wearing a linen ephod. So David, and with all the house of Israel, brought up the ark of the Lord with shouting and with the sound of the horn. As the ark of the Lord came into the city of David, Michal, the daughter of Saul, looked out of the window and saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord, and she despised him in her heart. And they brought in the ark of the Lord and set it in its place inside the tent that David had pitched for it. And David offered burnt offerings and peace offerings before the Lord. And when David had finished offering the burnt offerings and the peace offerings, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord of hosts and distributed among all the people, the whole multitude of Israel, both men and women, a cake of bread, a portion of meat, and a cake of raisins to each one. Then all the people departed, each to his house. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The New Testament lesson is written in Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 through 14. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. In love he predestined us for adoption as sons through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace with which he has blessed us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace, which he lavished upon us in all wisdom and insight, making known to us the, ministry, the mystery of his will according to the, his purpose, which he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time, to unite all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In him we have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will, so that we who were the first to hope in Christ 
might be to the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it, to the praise of his glory. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Shirley. Please stand for the gospel lesson from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5. The Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, verses 33 through 37. Reading in Jesus' name. Again, you have heard that it was said to those of old, You shall not swear falsely, but shall perform to the Lord what you have sworn. But I say to you, do not take an oath at all, either by heaven, or it is, for it is the throne of God, or by earth, for it his footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. And do not take an oath by your head, for you cannot make one hair white or black. Let what you say be simply yes or no. Anything more than this comes from evil. This is the word of the Lord. You may be seated, and if at this time, if the kids want to come forward for a children's message... Good morning, sir. Ma'am. Ma'am. Come on, Blake. It's okay. You want to bring Dad with? Uh. Oh. Here. Hi. How are you this morning? You got fingernail polish on? Man, that is... Oh, they're fake nails. Okay. Hi, Blake. Come on. It's okay. You want to come sit here? You can come sit right here. It's okay. Right by this guy. He doesn't bite. I think he took a shower this morning. I think. Maybe not. <laughs> Just like, nope, I will sit by my dad instead. All right, well, good morning. Are you, are you awake yet? It's okay to say good morning. One, two, three, good morning. Good morning. Okay, good. I'm glad you're awake. Well, you know, do you, do you guys like sports? Yes. What's, what's your favorite sport? Basketball? How about you? You don't have a favorite? You like them all? Do you have a favorite sport? No? You like uh, football? You don't like football? Okay. Does anyone like football? I might have the only one. Okay. All right. How about tennis? You know, Wimbledon's on right now. Have you been watching that at all? Or the tennis? Okay. I guess we'll just get over sports. But you know, when you play sports, it like, it like you know, I, I, I was reading about this young boy, his name is Thomas. And Thomas uh, was at school, and he loved to play sports, but he wasn't very good. In fact, he was really not good at all. But he always wanted to play. And so during, during a time there uh, at school, the teacher's like, well, we're going to go outside for recess right now. We're going to play softball, which is one of Thomas's favorite sports. And so line up, and we'll have Mary and, let's say, Tommy. No, we have the Thomas. Mary and David, they're going to pick the teams. And, of course, Thomas is like, oh, no, I'm never going to get picked. And he eventually was picked. And he got on the team, and they had a good time playing ball together. And, and when I think of, of, of being picked and having to wait to be picked, man, sometimes that's hard to wait, isn't it? It's like, would you pick me or what? You know, I, I, I watched a, t uh, a commercial the other day on this, and do you know who Charles Barkley is? Okay, I'll just skip that story then. He's a professional basketball player who, who is retired, and they're picking teams on the little kids were. And the, he was the first pick, and he goes, I knew it. I'd be first picked. And, of course, the one kid's over there like, oh. you'd have to see the commercial. But it, it was good. But when we think about our Bible lesson today that, we just, that, that, uh, that Shirley just read, God chose his family. Did you know that? God chooses his family. Would you like to be in God's family? If you want to be in God's family, raise your hand. I think we all want to be in God's family. And, and the thing is, the good news that Thomas, the, the young boy that I was telling you about, those classmates that, that picked him eventually, but guess what? Jesus picks us, God picks us every single time. The Bible tells us that before even he made the world, God loved us and chose us. 
He already knew who would choose him and accept Jesus. And anyone and everyone that can be in God's family by, by placing their faith in Jesus Christ, God welcomes and wants everybody. So guess what? When we confess our sin, like we just talked about, when we confess our sin and put our full trust in Jesus, we become God's children. Did you know that? So, did, have you ever confessed your sin and said, I'm sorry for doing something naughty? Have you ever done that? Have you asked Jesus to be in your heart? <gasps> what? That means you have all been chosen by God and are part of his family. How does it make you feel that God wants you to be part of his family? It makes me feel pretty happy, doesn't it? So why don't we go ahead and let's talk to God and thank him for that. Dear God, we thank you for choosing us and for sending your son so that we may choose to be, so that, so that we can choose to be part of your family. In Jesus' name we pray, everybody said, amen. All right, well, while we have a little thing here, hymn number 528 before the message. Isn't that just a beautiful song? Thank you for singing and making that your witness before we take a look at some scripture. Uh, let's, let's bow for a word of prayer. Father God, we thank you for your word, for we know your word is true and inerrant, inspired, infallible. And you use it to teach us, to correct us, to show us your grace, your mercy, and your love. And Lord, today as we take a look at uh, this passage of Scripture, Lord, I'm just asking that you would uh, open our hearts and minds to your truth, because we know every word of it is true. Lord, have blessed the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts, and let, they be, let them be pleasing and glorifying unto you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Well, as we take a look at today's passage of Scripture, we see, you know, uh, as, as, as Shirley read it and, and as we take, have read the entire thing, I really just want to focus on just that very first, that very first verse, verse 3 of, of Ephesians chapter 1. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Jesus Christ. Well, as we take a look at that and think about what it's saying to us there and as we have gone through and read through it already once, 
Everywhere we look in our world today, we can see the, the hand of God at work. Do you agree? Okay, some heads are going, yep, we can see it at work. And God is the author of all good, whether people realize it or not. Every good and perfect gift comes from above. It is good. If it's good, it's from God. But of course, evil exists in our world too, doesn't it? I think any time you open your phone or go online or even turn on your television, you see where evil exists in our world and the evil one is behind it all. Think about things that have gone on just recently as we think of uh, back at just many years back, 9-11, uh, that was evil. The Boston Marathon bombing was evil. Some of the different storms that ravaged different places, part of evil, part of destruction. We think of just recently the uh, Hurricane Elsa and the collapse down in Surfside in Miami. We also can go on and on and on and on and on thinking of things that are evil. And as we sometimes get worried and concerned, one thing that I want to, to have you think about today, and, and as we ponder some of the scriptures that I'm going to read, but also some of the things that, that are happening, we are at war, but it is against not flesh and blood, it's against the devil. It's also against spiritual powers. You've heard me talk about uh, in, 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 in First Peter about we need to be sober and on the alert because our adversary, the devil, is seeking for someone to devour. John chapter 8 verse 44 says this, you are the father, you are of your father the devil and you want to do the desires of your father. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. Wherever he tells a lie, he speaks from his own nature because he is a liar and the father of lies. Uh, and I know that huh, when we see bad things happening, we always want to point a finger. We always want to figure out how. We always want to try and figure out why is this happening. And this is, this is just, it should not be happening. If God was really in control, why are these things happening? Well, we also know that we have a deceiver. A deceiver in this world that is doing everything he possibly can to destroy your relationship with the Heavenly Father. The devil does three things. He deceives, he divides, and he destroys. They all start with D, just like the name devil. The devil's real. Hell is real. Hell was designed for the devil and him and his followers. It was not designed for us to go there. Unfortunately, if we do not confess our sins and we do not come away from that, we are following our old nature. Boy, Pastor, you're coming off a little strong up front. Yeah, you're right, I am. Because you know what? We live in a fallen world and there are bad things that happen. People are hurt, people are in pain, And as today is the outside, the marquee says, unified in Jesus. And we're going to take a look at that. But we're going to also look at what he does to unify us. And the three things that he does to un un unify us, and you've heard me pray it, you've heard me discuss it, you've heard me preach it. And we're going to go with three P's again today. You know, I always like that alliteration type stuff. So the three P's are very simple. He protects, he provides, and he gives power. Because we are, we are going against the person that wants to destroy, divide, and destruct, destroy us. And so when we think of those things, we see this passage of Scripture, and this, this one verse, this one verse of Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. It is such a simple and beautiful verse. It's up on the screen behind me. You can read along with me. It says, Blessed... 
be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. God reigns above all, period. God can make good things happen even in the midst of evil. So this morning as we think about how blessed we are to believe in Jesus Christ and be part of the Lord's kingdom on earth, which is his church, we see the blessings from God are those three things. We have protection for our daily life, we have provision for all of our needs, and we have power from the Holy Spirit. So let's take a look at the first one. We have protection for daily living. And I found this, this, this neat, this neat uh, uh, passage, uh, not passage, but this neat story. And it was about a woman who was at work and she received a phone call from her daughter and was, who was very sick with a fever. And so she was told that she needed to leave work and stop by the pharmacy uh, to get some medication. She got back in her car and found that she had locked, she, she, she got back to her car and found that she had locked the keys in the car. Anyone ever done that? I think so. Now we can just call OnStar, right? Could you unlock my car? Here's my passcode. No. She didn't have OnStar. So she had to find a way to get in and get to her daughter. So the babysitter who said that she, her daughter was more sick, she goes, maybe you could find an old coat hanger and use that to open the door. A woman looked around and she found a, a rusty old coat hanger and, that had been thrown out on the ground and possibly someone who was, you know, waiting to, needed to throw the garbage out, whatever. But she looked at the hanger and just says, I don't know how to do it though. So she bowed her head and she asked God to send her some help. Within five minutes, an old rusty car pulled up with a dirty, greasy, bearded man who was wearing the old biker skull rag on his head. The woman thought, this is what you sent to help me? But she was desperate, and so she was very thankful. The man got out of his car, and he asked her if, she could, if he could help her, and she says, yes, my daughter is very sick, and I stopped here to get some medicine, and I locked the keys in my car. I must get home to help her. Can you help me unlock my door? He said, sure. He walked over to the car in less than 30 seconds. He used that coat hanger and opened it right up. She hugged the man through her tears and said, thank you so much. You are a very nice man. The man replied, lady, I'm not a nice man. In fact, I just got out of prison. I was in prison for car theft. I've only been out for an hour. <laughs> the woman hugged the man again with sobbing tears, cried out to the Lord, oh, thank you, God, you sent me a professional. <laughs> Thought that was a cute story. But get, get this, and that's a neat story, but God has sent us professional for help in life. He gave us himself in the person of Jesus Christ. And now we have the Holy Spirit. And admittedly, we all need help in life at various times. We are humans and we often are helpless. Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 through 29 says this, Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Church, I'm telling you right now, the need for the Lord's comfort, peace, and rest in life, we must and also need help with raising our children, with our marriages, with our work, and with our relationships. And God can help us with all these things and more if we seek him and seek his guidance. And we find it in the word. 1 Timothy chapter 3, I know you know this one. 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. All scripture is inspired by God and benefit, beneficial for teaching, for rebuke, for correction, for training in righteousness, so that the man or woman of God may be fully capable, equipped for every good work. 
Scripture teaches us. Scripture teaches us how to live right, how to, how, to, how, how, how to allow God, who is the professional. He knows what, what he is talking about in his word. It's always right to go by the Bible. I tell, we've said it many times, basic instruction before leaving earth. It's everything we need. Do we always know where to look? No. In fact, I, I, I've told you many times about that time where, where I, I, you know, I was wondering, I felt God calling me into ministry, but I just didn't know. And I'm like, please, God, you got to just talk to me. Something's up, and i got to hear from you. And I remember opening my Bible to 1 Timothy. And it's a, the letter from Paul to Timothy saying, I'm now putting you into service. Now, was that uh, just happened? No. God knew that. God knew what was going to happen. He knew when the time was right. He knew it, he needed to, it, to step in at that sp perfect time because he can do anything. The more that we try to do, the better off we'll be in life no matter what we're dealing with, right? That's what, how, how our, our mind works. But it says it's that completely opposite. Allow God to take over. Jesus can do anything anything. He is all-powerful. He is all-knowing. He is all-present. He is here all the time. And that, to be honest, should seal the deal. Whatever it is that we must do or we face in life, the Lord is willing to help us and to guide us. You know, it's kind of, a, the, the, like, like I've said many times, have you just talked to him yet? Have you talked to the Lord? By just simple, by just stopping and praying away and asking God for guidance and have him show you in his word, he's all we need. All we need to do is believe, trust, and obey. So we have seen that he will, he will protect us. But now we also take a look at the second thing. We have provision or he will provide for our needs. Someone once, I, I was reading this uh, again the other day, and, and, you know, forgive me if this is, and I hope you don't take this as a political thing, because it's not. But there was, a, there was a thing that I read the other day, and it says, uh, your next tax income form will be simplified to contain four lines and four lines only. How much was your income last year? What were your expenses? How much do you have left? Send it in. I know it sounds a little political, but when I think of this, what this very thing, I you know I remember talking to a guy, and we were we were sitting there talking back and forth, and because he was struggling so bad with his with his budget, and and so he was he's like I, I got this budget, it just isn't working though, and he goes I, I spend about forty percent of my income for food, and thirty percent of my income for housing, and thirty percent of for clothing, and twenty percent for transportation and incidentals. Have you been adding them up? Is it over 100? It's actually 120%. He goes, I don't know how to do it. So I guess what I'm saying here is that we all go through hard times. Sometimes it's financial. Believe me, I understand being financially strapped. It, 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 it is not fun. And if you can find a way and you're constantly putting things away and saving, fantastic. I'm very thankful for that for you. But as a, the Christian financial advisor, Dave Ramsey of, of, of Financial Peace University, he holds seminars continually. I know we just had, had one here and, and how to manage money and, and, most peop that most, and, and most people do go and, and they need that. But he advises there to never buy anything on credit except for a house. But mostly, most people cannot do that. Sometimes we are immune to thinking what we can do. But guess what? The Lord can help. Because in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, it says this very word, But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, for all these things will be provided for you. The first step in the right direction of overcoming any type of problem is seeking the Lord and seeking his face in everything in life and he had, that he has promised. He will remember, if we remember him, he will remember us. 
Sometimes it's hard with our monies, isn't it? With our monies and with the things that we hold near and dear to our life. I know the cost of living is high, but it's not the cost of living that is the problem. It's the cost of high living. 1 Corinthians chapter, or 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6 and 8 says this. Now I say this, the one who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and the one who sows generously will also reap generously. Each one must do just as he has, has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under comp compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace overflow to you, so that always having all sufficiency in everything you have an abundance for every good deed pastor I didn't know you're gonna hit me in the pocketbook today that's not what I did what I'm saying is one thing that we all hold near and dear that we hold on tight to is our pocketbook and I'm not here to ask you that we need to start giving more that's not what I'm doing Listen to what I'm saying, okay? What I'm saying is God wants com complete control of every aspect of your life. Every aspect. He promises to protect us. He promises to provide for our needs. I was having this conversation with uh, both of my kids this week. Uh, we were talking about monies. And, uh, and so I was talking about how you know, at one time when we did make an unbelievable amount of money, we spent an unbelievable amount of money. It was one of those things where, and we'll just use, if we made 100 bucks, we spent 150. Grab the credit card, we're going for supper, yeehaw. And it was something that we did continually. We always pushed the limit. If it was a $5,000 vacation, after it was all said and done, it was closer to 10. That's how we lived. And then we were sitting there going, boy, we make a lot of money, but we don't have any left. And then I think about when God sent us to seminary. And that lady right there, I remember when I told her what we're, and I, we discussed, I didn't tell her what we're going to do. When we discussed it together and we went together. And on paper, everybody, it didn't work at all. We got there, and it was like, now what? We've got four years left of this. And we learned to live frugally. We learned to, to shop differently, to eat differently, to spend more time, quality time, instead of having to be entertained by something else all the time. And as I sat there and I wondered, because we, we came into some, some major issues where I'm like, no clue. I told you last week about spending the time with my buddies freaking out about the tuition. Well, there was times where the monies was tight. I remember we came in once on fumes. I was out preaching. Yeah, we're in Ohio, I think. And we're out preaching and we are coming home on fumes. I mean, we just, I think we coasted in to our garage there at, on, on, on campus. And we got the mail, and we opened up the mail, and I'm like, good thing that you walk to work. <laughs> good thing I can walk to seminary. We we'll might have to walk up and get gas to get out of here to get groceries. But I don't know how we're going to do that. Start opening the mail. And there was this little church. Humboldt, Humboldt, I love it. Humboldt, Tennessee. And they said, you've been on our hearts, future Pastor Emerson. A check for fifteen hundred dollars. Kelly, do you remember that? I mean, I'm sitting there and I'm just like, I'm gonna need to go and take care of my leaky eyes. There must be too much pollen in here today. God provided. He protected us. He provided for us. Here we're seeing he's giving us this one verse, and this one verse has so much information in it because it is continually going over and over and over again. I have you. 
I want a relationship with you. I love you. I'm going to provide for you. I'm going to protect you. And then when you are with me and we are together and I am pushing for you and I will show you what you must do, I will fill you with my Holy Spirit and he will give you power. He's, this is what he's asking us. I, I found this this morning and I had to put it up here. It's, 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 you know, this is all I have. And he says, that's all I want. He wants you. <laughs> I will take care of you if you allow me to. I'm asking you just to put your, your body, your soul, your everything in my hand, and I will fill you with the power of my Holy Spirit. Probably one of the greatest fears all, all people in, uh, experience is not being in control. As we think about... <laughs> Death. Anyone can, can, can anyone control death? Guess what? It's coming for each one of us one day. And most people are terrified of death. Either death itself or how they will die. But there's another fear that we should be, a, that we should be associated with far worse than death. And it's the fear of having to, f to face God. When we are afraid, are, are, are we afraid to face God? And, 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 and as we are in Jesus' house and, his, and, and we are part of his family, we should never be scared to face God face to face because when that time comes, I'm wanting him to say to me, welcome home, my good and faithful servant. Because all he said is, look, I want your heart. In fact, the only thing that I want to hear from him is welcome home. Jesus Christ died to bring the church into existence. He had not gone, gone to, to he, if, if he had not gone to the cross and bear our sins, there would not be any hope. There would only be churches talking about what God might be and not preaching about what Jesus did. But Jesus is the Savior of the world. I loved it so much today when we were in, the elders and I and were in praying before, before the service, and Roger was, 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 was praying. And I love when Roger prays. It's, 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 it's beautiful. And it's from his heart. Not that the other guys don't. <laughs> I'm not saying that. But he said one thing that hit this, this morning that hit me right in my heart. And he goes, Jesus... I know you are the Son of God. Period. It was the most beautiful thing I heard this morning. Because we can get all wrapped up into different things, can't, can't we? We can get all anxious and we can get all, we can get all upset. And, but one thing that we know, one thing we know without a shadow of a doubt, that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that he died on the cross for our sins. 1 John chapter 4, verses 16 through 18 says this, But we have to come to know that, and, and have believed the love which God has for us. God is love, and the one who remains in love remains in God, and God remains in him. But this love is perfected with us so that we might have confidence in the day of judgment because as he is we also are in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear involves punishment, and the only one who fears is not perfected in love. What a beautiful passage of Scripture that points us right to exactly the reason being. You know, I've, I've, I, you've heard me say it many times. I love when there's an equal sign. Here's the result. This is, the f this is what I want you to know. That what I want you to know is that I love you. And that I know that I have you in the palm of my hand no matter what you're going through. I got you. Found this quote, believe God and put your trust in Jesus Christ and not yourself. Because far too many people have that mindset, I don't know if I've done enough to get to heaven. Well, I'll tell you this, no one will ever do enough to get to heaven. All we must do is believe 
Confess with your mouth, believe in your heart, and you will be saved. Doesn't say you have to give, give, give. Doesn't say you have to do, do, do. It says all you need to do is give me you. You know, you've, you've heard me quote John 3, 16 and 17 many times, but I'm going to go back one verse to 15. It says this, And just as Moses lifted up the servant, serpent into the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, so that everyone who believes will have eternal life in him. Why? That's where we start. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to judge the world but so that the world might be saved. So, life application time. Life application time. Jesus Christ Ascended is the meaning or of, of the introduction of introducing us to the heavenly places. We just saw that. By which our sins were, bar were barred against us. Compared, compare the, 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 the change made by Jesus Christ. Because while, Je while Jesus in the flesh was in the form of a servant, God's people could not realize fully under heavenly privileges as sons and daughters but our true citizenship is in heaven where we have a high priest Jesus Christ who is forever blessing us and our treasure is there our aims and affections our hope our inheritance the gift of the spiritual the spirit himself the source of the spiritual blessing is the virtue of Jesus Christ having ascended to heaven in Jesus the center of source of all blessings to us. We are blessed. We are blessed so much. And so when I'm, when I'm seeing this, the life application in this, in this one verse, this one verse is a redirectional verse. It is a focusing verse. It is a take your eyes off of your money, take your eyes off of your problems, take your eyes off of all the things that are giving you stress and anxiety, take your eyes off of all the things that you can't control, take your eyes off of this things of this world and focus it on me because I am blessing you with an eternal blessing through Jesus Christ. To be honest, there is no other need for anything else, life application-wise. Because of what he's doing is he's saying, stop right now and refocus. Stop looking at your problem. Stop. You know, you've heard many times people say, be part of the solution, not part of the problem. Have you heard that one? I'm sure you have. Jesus, God, is telling us through his word right now, be part of the solution that you can't control. But look to me, and I will give you eternal blessing. I've got you right where I need you, even though it hurts today, or tomorrow, or the next day, or maybe something in the past that you're like, I can't let that one go. It won't ever happen to me again. What he's saying is, stop and allow me. Do you have that peace? Do you have that peace in your heart? Where he's, you have taken your whole heart and said, here, it's all I got. And he looks at you and says, it's all I wanted. Just you. If you haven't done that yet, I'm going to give you a second to just, we're going to close our eyes and bow our heads, all of us. And I'm not going to ask for you to raise your hand. I'm not going to ask for you to stand up. I'm just going to let you, I want you to sit right where you're at. And I want you to pray this very simple prayer. Father God in heaven, thank you for loving me. I am sorry, and I confess my sins to you. I confess all the things that I cannot 
control. I confess my own selfishness, my pride, my arrogance, my controlling spirit, and I ask for you to forgive me. I do accept what your son Jesus did on the cross for my sins. And I'm asking you to enter into my heart and accept me wholly right where I'm at. Help me to live a life that is pleasing unto you. And continue, Lord, to shape me in the way that is pleasing unto you. I love you. And I accept you as my Savior. Father God, if there is anyone that prayed that prayer for the first time, for the manyth time, I'm just asking for you to continue to talk to their hearts today. Continue to show them how much you love them. Show them your grace, your mercy, and your love, and allow them to live a life pleasing unto you. Allow them to confess their sins and then leave them at the cross and become a new creature in you. Lord, I'm sorry for the sins I confess. I have in my heart, and I ask for you to forgive me. Allow me to do the job you've called me to do, to shepherd this, this flock. But as, as a church, Lord, continue to unite us in your word, and let us continue to believe and know in our heart that you will protect, you will provide, and then you will fill us with your power through your Holy Spirit. I love you, Lord. I thank you and I praise you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Why don't we stand and sing our final hymn, hymn number 447, which is such a, <laughs> boy, this one works out really good. He leadeth me, O blessed thought. Hymn number 447.
please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive a benediction from 1 Timothy chapter 6. He who is the blessed and only sovereign, the King of kings and Lord of lords, who alone possesses immortality and dwells in an unapproachable light, whom no man has seen or can see, to him be honor and eternal dominion. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.